Today we are checking out this HP Victus 15L small little gaming computer. In this video we're going to open it up, take it apart, see what it takes to upgrade everything in there, see how easy it is, but I'm actually going to downgrade this one. Let me explain why. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be taking a look at this HP Victus 15L and like I said, we're going to open it up and we're actually going to downgrade it. So why are we going to downgrade this thing? Well, that's because these things are typically kind of entry-level gaming computers, uh, pre-built. Sometimes the companies cut corners on what they put inside. And there's a lot of parts that you can cut corners on, but there's some parts that you can't cut corners on. And one of those is a CPU. And in this case, we've got a i7-12700 CPU in here. And this thing... Let's just face it, it doesn't deserve that. So we're going to liberate that i7, and we're going to put an i3 in here. And in the process of doing so, I'm going to open this up, show you everything that can be upgraded, show you how to do that. Uh, we're probably not going to have to change anything other than the CPU, but we're going to take a look at what it takes for everything. And then we're also going to do benchmarks before and after this downgrade to see what it really affects. So let's start off by looking at what we've got here. So like I said, we're starting with this 12th gen Intel i7-12700F CPU, and that is 12 cores and 20 threads. So like I said, this thing, it works and it's running great, but this processor should really be in a nicer build. It's already got 16 gigs of RAM, so we don't have to touch that. It's got a 500 gigabyte SSD, so we probably don't have to touch that either, but I'll show you where that's at. And then it's got a RTX 2060 Super, which is a pretty decent GPU for this type of little pre-built, you know, retail-ready computer. So like I said, I've already run two benchmarks. I ran a 3D Mark, and then I ran Cinebench. And with the Cinebench, we ran both the single-core and multi-core tests. And then with the 3D Mark, we ran Time Spy, which has both a CPU test and a GPU test. We know the CPU test is going to go down. But what I'm curious in seeing is, does it affect the GPU? Does the i3 start to throttle that 2060? I don't think so. I think we'll be able to put an i3 in here and it's going to perform just as well gaming-wise. But that's kind of the premise that we're going with. And that's what we're going to find out. So these are the specs that we're starting with. I think the next step we need to do is go ahead and open up this case and take a look inside. All right, so I've powered it down and I've taken all the cables out. And we're going to start by opening this side panel here. HP loves their Torx screws. So we've got a T15 tip here that we're going to use to get most of this stuff off. And just a single screw on this door here. And it is captive. That's nice. And we can pull that right off and peel away and look inside here. So this is what I mean by cutting corners. You can see nothing inside here is extremely beautiful or anything, but it all works. And in this case, the power supply is actually a 500 watt version. I think on some of the lower end ones, they have smaller ones, and that's going to really limit what you can put in there for the GPU. But we don't have to even worry about that because we're going to be taking power out of here. So let's go ahead and get some of these cages off so you can see the rest of the motherboard. And there's one screw here that comes off to take this black cage out. And once that screws out of there, then this thing just kind of peels down. And you can see they've got the, the bracket here to kind of hold this GPU in there. This thing is not critical. Maybe it adds a little bit of structure to it. But we're going to put that back when we're done. I'm just kind of taking it away just to see what's behind it. Next thing we're going to do is take off this front plate. So we've got three plastic tabs like this that hold this left side on. And these are actually pretty pliable. So sometimes they're really dry and... They feel like they're going to snap off, but these actually felt pretty good. So this kind of peels to the side. There is one cable that runs from here into the motherboard that's probably for this infinity mirror light thing. I'm not going to mess with that just yet. I'm just going to kind of set that to the side and decide if we need to take that off. Next up, we got this hard drive cage, which again is held by, I think, just one screw here. So let me take that out. And with that screw out, this thing should just kind of come out. It looks like it's held up by some brackets here at the top. And it looks like the extra SATA cables and power cables are kind of routed back here. So let me undo those. 
now this thing comes right off so the there's a little hanger here that we had the extra cables that if you wanted to you could add a say to hard drive either a small ssd or a full size three and a half inch drive and screw it down in here and it's already pre-wired for power and SATA. So now that we got those brackets out of the way, let me rotate this back around so we can look back inside. Now we can clearly see everything that's in here. We got the two sticks of RAM here, so two eight gig sticks of RAM. If yours came with eight, you can go ahead and upgrade that there. And of course we've got our NVMe drive over here. So just one little screw to take out and you can take that one out and put in a larger one. Now if you do that, you're gonna to wanna to clone Windows onto the larger one, or you can just add another drive to it and keep just the 500 gig for Windows and then add all your games onto that second drive. Looks like we've got uh, GPU power here. We've got another six pin in addition to the eight pin that's plugged in. So you could upgrade this a little bit larger if you wanted to, and you've got the uh, power to go a little bit higher. But I'm very happy with the 2060 Super because like I said, we're gonna go down to an i3 and I think that's gonna be paired up just fine. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and lay this thing down so that we can go ahead and take the fan off of here and then clean up the CPU so we can remove it. All right, so here's our little fan here. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the fan power cable that's plugged into the motherboard. So you can see that right there, right where this multicolored harness goes to the motherboard. And we're gonna take that out. And now we just need to take the four screws off of here to remove the heat seeking fan from the CPU socket. And they've even used uh, T15 Torx on these screws. And typically these are gonna be Phillips heads on most every other fan, but since it's HP, it's gonna be a T15. So I'm gonna take these off and then I'll talk you through remo removing it. All right, so you can see me as I'm taking the screws out, holding a little bit of pressure on the fan downward. And that's because these screws are kind of spring-loaded. And the last thing you want to do is loosen it up to where the thing springs off and possibly damages that CPU or damages the socket of the CPU. So I'm just holding a little bit of pressure. I'm not pushing down strong. And once we get all four of these loosened up, then we can go ahead and remove the fan and heatsink. And these screws, like I said, they're kind of spring-loaded down into a threaded socket down at the motherboard. And as you loosen them up, you may even hear the last thread pop out of that socket like that. That tells you that you've got it all the way out. So I think this thing is all the way off. Now what I'm gonna do is do a slight twist left and right just to kind of break some of that. And it, it didn't even need that much, but you've got some thermal compound on here that you wanna break free. And if it's really dry and crusted, the last thing you wanna do again is kind of pull straight up on it and rip this CPU out of the socket. So I usually try to wiggle a little bit to break it free and then pull it up. So this is off, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this off. And then I'm also gonna clean all the thermal compound off of the CPU itself. So I just use some rubbing alcohol here and then I'm just using some toilet paper folded over and you just get it wet enough that you can bring it down in here and start to wipe it away. Now I try to keep it from going over the sides and onto the brackets and stuff so I try to kind of do an outward circle to get the outside edges and then bring it inward to get it all off. And it takes a couple different swipes to do that. So let me go ahead and finish cleaning this off and I'll be right back. All right, so I got the uh, heat sink here cleaned up and the CPU. And if you're gonna use toilet paper, make sure that you do um, collect any you know scraps of, of toilet paper you should really use like a, a lint-free dust cloth or something, but I've never had a problem with toilet paper. Just make sure, if, especially on the heat sink, if the toilet paper starts to break apart like this, that you don't leave any on, on here. So that's all cleaned up. The CPU is mostly cleaned up. There's some areas of the, uh, you know, the socket that you can't get to unless it's out of there. So that's what we're going to do next is take that out. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and open up 
the new one here. Here's the i3 12100F. And this comes with its own fan. I'm just going to reuse the fan that was in there since it's already set up for it. But I'm going to go ahead and take this out so that we can go ahead and pop this out, put it into the plastic clamshell that came with the new one, and then put the new one right in the socket. All right, so I'm just going to take this little locking bracket here and I'm going to push it down and push it to the right. That's going to free it up and then bring that straight up. And that'll allow me to open up this cage here. And we're going to be careful not to touch any of the contacts and not to drop anything inside the motherboard socket. So we're going to just pull it up to the side here, grab it by the edges, take that one out, put it in the clamshell. We can finish cleaning that up in a second. And then we're going to go ahead and lay the new one right down in its place. And you can see there is little marking here and right here it's telling you that it's the right corner and this thing is going to just drop right down and I say drop you don't want to drop it it's going to lay right down in there and once it's all the way in the socket you can kind of wiggle it slightly just to make sure that it's fully seated in the socket and then we can lay this cage back down and lock it back down the way it was and the CPU is done now and since we cleaned all the thermal compound off, we're going to head, go ahead and replace that with some new thermal compound. So, so I'm just going to squeeze a big dot right in the middle. Maybe add another little dot here and dot here. That should be good. And then we're going to replace this right back where it was. So I remember that the wire was on this side. So that it's going to plug right back in where it was before. So I'm going to do the exact opposite. I'm going to push this down, hold it in place, line up all the screws into the sockets, and you can see these threaded sockets in the motherboard. There's a plate on the back side of the motherboard that has those sockets in it. And I'm going to hold that in place, line them all up, and then I'm going to start on one corner, try to get a couple threads locked in, and then go to the opposite corner, get a couple threads locked in, and then just keep on crisscrossing until it's fully seated. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, and it took about three passes of going back and forth, doing a couple twists each time, until eventually you can see it locks. That means it's fully seated. It means that the screw is all the way as tight as it needs to be. That's nice about these, that they don't let you over-tighten them. So this thing is done. Last thing we have to do is replace the power fan, the fan power cable into the motherboard. And the CPU is done. We're ready to put this thing back together. Like I said, we're not going to touch the RAM, we're not going to touch the SSD, we're going to put it back together. So let me go ahead and get that back together and then we're going to boot it up and take a look at it. Alright, I replaced both of these cages here. I did take the cables that were attached to this one and reattach them just to keep them from, you know, kind of flopping around inside the case. Uh, you wouldn't want them to hit the fan. So that's all done. I'm going to put the side back on, put this uh, front cover back on, and let's boot it up. Alright, I got it all put back together and all wired back up and we're going to hit the button and hope that everything works. And HP has given us this screen here because I think it recognizes that there is a different processor in there than there was before. So we can go into the system information, and go to the diagnostics if we want to, but we're just gonna hit enter and do continue startup. All right, here we are back in Windows. So let's go ahead and open up Task Manager and look at our hardware and see our CPU is a 12th gen i3-12100F and it is a four core, eight thread processor now. Higher base speed than it was before. That's because it has far less cores and threads. Uh, everything else looks to be the same, which should be expected because we didn't do anything to it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run these benchmarks and then we'll come back and we'll talk about them. All right, so all the benchmarks are done and I took some screenshots and here we are looking at Cinebench 2024 
Here's the single core and multi-core scores for the i3 that we just put in there. So it's looking like 98 points for the single core and 474 for the multi-core. So let's go ahead and compare that to the i7. And here's the i7, so we went up a couple points, or actually we went down a little bit from the i7 to the i3 at 110 on the single core. But of course the multi-core is where you're going to see the biggest jump. So 831 points versus the 474 or whatever it was on the i3. So I think that was to be expected. Single core didn't go down very much. Multi-core went down almost half. But let's go ahead and take a look at the 3D results because that's what I'm more interested in. Alright, so here's the times by results and we're starting here with the i7 first. And with i7 we see a graphic score of 8549. A CPU score of 14,938 with an overall score of 9135. So let's go ahead and take a look at the i3. And here we go. The graphic score didn't change much, which is good. We'll talk about that in a second. And the CPU score did go down quite a bit. So again, we expected that. But the more important thing is if we flip back and forth between these two scores, The graphic score drops down just a tiny bit, and that could just be temperature in the room, the fact that we only did one test, etc. So I would say the 8549 and the 8503, let's go ahead and call those the same. And that's important because I wanted to make sure that this graphic score on this one, on the i3, didn't drop down, notating that the lower processor was, you know, kind of drawing it down. So it doesn't look like the CPU is throttling this GPU at all. So overall, I'm very happy with the results. I think this is still, this still the 8150 is still a good score. Um, of course, it's a 3D score that's being driven mostly on this graphic score here from that 2060 Super. So I consider that a success. We have successfully taken that nice processor out and put in, and that, that 12100F is still a great processor. Uh, one of the best bang for the bucks out there right now. Four cores, eight threads, a decent clock speed, and it performed great. So this machine right here is going to be well suited for it. And the i7 that I took out, I've got a much nicer motherboard and system and GPU to go along with that. So stay tuned to the channel. We're going to build up something nice with that. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. Let me know any questions or comments that you have down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you had fun watching me downgrade a computer for once instead of upgrade them all the time. If you did, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. But I thank you as always for watching. Until next time, peace out and geek out.